Now it's time for a recap of all the weekend action from the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics. And for that, of course, we're joined live in the studio by our Ite Ho. Good afternoon to you, Tao. Good afternoon. I imagine that there is a lot to talk about today considering all the action coming from Sochi over the weekend. That's right. There was over two days of action over the weekend. And first up, Korea's third medal at the Sochi Winter Games was won by 17-year-old Shin Seok Ki in the women's short track competition, the 1500-meter event. And it was her first Olympic medal ever. Right. Um, I mean, it was a thrilling race. Um, you know, I was on my toes up until the very last blade came in. You know, I think uh, everybody was on the edge of their seats as well because uh, it all was going well for Shim uh, until the final two laps where uh, Zhu Yang of China just scored a past her at the last moment uh, to capture the gold. Right. I mean, uh, Shim Seok Ki going into the race was a gold medal uh, favorite, but, you know, she is an excellent athlete. However, I suppose Zhu Yang's uh, years of experience uh, could not be topped by uh, Shim. But despite having skated such greatly and having won a silver medal, uh, the 17-year-old uh, was crying and in tears after the race. She was really apologetic and in tears, sobbing, uh, because she really wanted the goal for Team Korea to fire up Team Korea so everybody does a little bit better for the remainder of the Olympics. And, you know, she's still so young, 17 years old. She has not even graduated high school yet and she has all this pressure and all this responsibility on her shoulders and so it, it's really amazing. Right, nonetheless, uh, excellent uh, skating uh, and uh, excellent, um, and, you know, she did perform very well and we look forward to more of her races in the Sochi Winter Olympics as well as in Pyeongchang four years later. Now, uh, another great story from the weekend comes from men's short track speed skating. That's right, and what a story it was. Victor An of Russia, or the skater formerly known as An Yun Su, who skated for Korea, won the, the gold medal for Russia in the first ever gold medal uh, or first ever medal for Russia in the short track competition overall. And this was a great story that was, getting, that was making international headlines all over the world. I mean, um, it, was a, it was a great moment uh, for, for Korean fans and Team Korea and Korea. But uh, again, at the same time, a very um, heartbreaking one to see him uh, on the podium with a Russian flag being raised. But um, it, he was quite emotional after the race. That's right. It was kind of a bittersweet victory for Korea and seeing him in another uniform, especially the Russian uniform. But despite all that, you know, uh, I think it was a triumphant story. He collapsed onto the ice after he won the gold medal, uh, kissing the ice. He was sobbing and crying. I mean, you can only imagine eight long years of, of four surgeries, a year long rehab, relocation to a new country, finally to emerge victorious again and on top of his game. So despite, you know, what country he was skating for, because it really, it was kind of saddening for me as well, seeing him waving the Russian flag, but uh, as a sports fan, I think it was just a great story overall. I mean, he's, uh, he said repeatedly in interviews that the only reason why he uh, became a naturalized Russian is because of his love for short track speed skating. And I suppose this was his chance to prove to the world and to all Koreans that that was really truly the reason why he uh, became a Russian and now he has uh, succeeded in doing so. And you know, I think what further exemplified this was his actions after the race where he embraced Shin Daun, a former Korean teammate, and you know, he said, good job on the race. And it just shows, you know, a spirit of the Olympian and the Olympics overall, and that he's still just a true sportsman. Um, it, I mean, it's a loss for Korea, but then again, uh, certainly does seem like uh, Team Russia struck gold with this uh, victor on. Definitely, both literally and figuratively. I mean, this was Russia's first ever medal in the short track competition, and they scored two. Uh, An Yunsu scored the gold, and his Russian teammate scored the silver. So, uh, you know, in every aspect, Russia definitely scored gold with An, and even Pu uh, Putin was, uh, had An's picture on his personal SNS congratulating An for his success at these games. Right, uh, truly inspiring. Um, I'm sure we will get to hear more of his story and his side of all things after the Olympics are over, as he promised. So we look forward to that. And we will see uh, on again uh, during the 5,000-meter uh, relay event. Of course, he will be uh, skating for Team Russia, but um, you will still be rooting for him. That's right. Now, uh, he still has a chance for another few medals at these uh, Sochi Winter Games, and he's already the most decorated uh, short track athlete in the history of the Winter Games. 
five medals total, four gold, one bronze. So we'll see if he can add to his total. Right. Another, um, you know, another action came from men's figure skating competition, and supposedly we have a new uh, skating star. That's right. Now, uh, Yuzuru Hanyu, 19-year-old skating prodigy from Japan, uh, won or rather didn't lose the gold after a spectacular performance in the short program. I think the turnaround from the short program to the free skate program was much too short, and er all the skaters were a bit tired, uh, which kind of showed in their lackluster performance. Yuzuru himself felt twice during his uh, his free skate program and still managed to clinch the gold so I mean like um, congratulations to him as well as uh, his coach Brian Orser he has um, you know produced a two Olympic champions in in two consecutive Olympics. It's amazing how Orser has done this. I mean, he he really does seem to have a knack for finding these prodigies and then coaching them up. And we see the results once again with Hanyu and uh, of course in Vancouver with uh, Kimiona, who is a superstar around the world now. Now uh, another another sporting event that's stealing um, the highlight or the spotlight is a uh, women's curling team in Sochi for uh, Korea. That's right, and you wouldn't expect it from curling in Korea, but it's really taken off as a really popular sport. A lot of people are very interested in it. However, the unfortunate news is Curls Day, as they are affectionately known here in Korea, is mathematically eliminated from the Olympics, losing to Denmark. So uh, it's unfortunate, but it shows that, you know, there's more popularity now. More people will be looking to these games in the 2018 Pyeongchang Games. So we'll probably need to invest a little bit more into the program and develop young athletes. Right, and there's an interesting story with the skipper of the Korean team, Kim Ji-sun. Uh, she's married to a Chinese uh, curling team member. That's right. Now, uh, Zhu Zhaoming is a, a, is a curling uh, athlete for Team China as well. And he, they're both at the Sochi Winter Olympics, and they were able to spell, spend Valentine's Day together last Friday, of course. And uh, another interesting fact was that Team China and his wife, Team uh, Korea were up against each other last week, and he came out and said he's rooting for his countrymen, but I think deep down inside, we all know how he was thinking and how he was feeling, of course. Uh, well, um, you know, um, we'll hear more of their story, of course, after the Olympics again with the curling team as well being so popular. Now, let's move on to the uh, Korean men's bobsledding team. It saw its first Olympic action. Now, this is a new event for Team Korea. We had two teams performing in the two-man bobsled event, uh, Team A and Team B. Both are uh, in the prelims right now, placed at 18th and 25th, respectively. And when you mention bobsledding, of course, in the Olympics, you can't think of help but uh, thinking of a movie, right? Cool Runnings, and they're also in the Olympics this time as well. Right, the Jamaican bobsledding team. Um, how are they doing? Well, you know, this is the first time they managed to qualify for the Olympics in 12 long years. And to commemorate this event, the Jamaican, uh, the, the Jamaican tourism agency actually made a music video uh, supporting and cheering for the Jamaican bobsled team. Let's take a look. <laughs> Very Jamaican style. Oh yes, reggae music all throughout. <laughs> and what's interesting is they synced it to the Sochi track. So throughout the song, uh, uh, the music video, if you turn it on as soon as the race starts, it'll be at the right moment on the song, depicting where they are on the track. So interesting indeed. Uh, and I hear that uh, in the last minute, at the last turn, the music video kind of gives a hint to the athletes on how to turn and things like that. So, um, you know, I think some fans will have it on for the Jamaican team when they, uh, I, I suppose, come down on their sled. And, you know, although they are in last place right now, I, it, I don't think it matters because, you know, to manage to qualify for the Olympics is amazing, of course, for all athletes. And although the movie was comedic, the Jamaican team is all about business here at the Sochi Games. Right, and uh, they had a little episode of losing their sled in the early in the earlier days of the Olympics, but uh, you know they found it obviously, and I, we're all rooting for Team Jamaica because of their inspirational story. Now um, that is uh, that was the weekend games, and we look forward to today's games and your wrap up tomorrow. All right, and uh, I'll be back at four o'clock for more of the latest in sports and what to watch for tonight as well.